In this video, we are going to be covering everything you need to know about free cash flow as it relates to financial valuation. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on how investment bankers use free cash flow to value businesses. This is going to be very useful because a lot of what we're going to be covering here, you will likely get asked during your interviews. And this will show you why investment bankers put so much emphasis on the free cash flow calculation. So to begin with, free cash flow has a slightly different interpretation based on who you ask. So an investment banker's interpretation of free cash flow, who is valuing a business for the purpose of an M&A activity or taking a company public via an IPO, is going to be different from an accountant who might work at that business because they have different incentives. And each person, the investment banker and the accountant, wants to maximize the number that will make them look good in front of their business or client or bosses. Essentially, the interpretation of free cash flow is the amount of money which the company has left over after paying all of its liabilities. So after paying for rent, keeping the lights on, salary, equipment repairs, and every operating expense, whatever the company has left is free cash flow. And it's discretionary cash. So the company can choose to do whatever it wants with it. And that's incredibly important and valuable to whoever is going to own that business because it's cash that you can play with. So you're probably wondering, why does discretionary cash matter so much to investment bankers? Well, simply put, the value of a business is based on how much free cash a company can produce. Think about it. When you have free cash, you can choose to invest it and grow the business, pay down debt so your debt repayments are then lowered, or you can even take money out of the business and put it in your pocket without affecting the business after you pay taxes, of course unless you're Amazon, Facebook, or Starbucks, which we're not gonna get into maybe for another video. But for investment bankers, the more free cash flow a business can produce, the more valuable it is. So the high valuation means more fees from clients, which means bigger bonuses, and pretty much the reason why you're watching this video because you're trying to get into investment banking. It's all about the free cash flow, baby. The trouble is how you calculate free cash flow. It's a simple calculation, but depending on your agenda, you will arrive at different values. Let's take a look at how you get to free cash flow. The formula is the following. Free cash flow is net income, less networking capital, less capex. So how do you get this? So using the model that we have in front of us right here, the three financial statements, uh, you have your income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. You start off with your revenue, you pay all of the expenses, including tax, until you arrive to net income. Now, net income is not your free cash flow because there are still other expenses which you have to pay. For example, you may be a business that needs to buy inventory upfront to sell next quarter. So because of that, you have to take care of your networking capital needs. And to get that, you then have to jump on the balance sheet and calculate your networking capital. So current assets minus current liabilities. For investment banking purposes, you have to use the net working capital figure. I do have a video on how to calculate net working capital, so do check that video out. But, specific, but essentially, you use net working capital. You take away net working capital. So after you've taken away net working capital, you then jump onto your cash flow statement, and then you have to take away CapEx. Now, CapEx is normally found under investment activities. And what CapEx is, essentially, it's the cost which you incur in order to service your repairs. If you, are, if you own a business, you're likely going to be using assets and equipment and they're going to be damaged over time and they need to be repaired, they need to be serviced. And you have to repair it. You have to repair your machinery, your warehouse, your trucks, because if you don't, you won't have a business to operate. And it's very important that you don't ignore this. And you won't find the CapEx line item on the income statement. So if you were to just look at the income statement, you would probably miss that out. So that's one method of calculating free cash flow. Now there are some adjustments that, also, that you also need to take into account, especially if you're in investment banking. 
one of those adjustments are adjusting for non-cash expenses. So for example, you'll find this on the cash flow statement and it's listed as non-cash expenses. And you will have to take care of this because these are non-cash expenses. You haven't, you haven't spent this out as cash yet. You haven't paid out depreciation in, in the form of cash. You just recorded it as an expense in order to lower your tax burden, but you still have that cash in your bank account. So this is why investment bankers arrive at one value for free cash flow and accountants arrive at a different value for free cash flow. But it depends on which method or which numbers you're going to include or not include in your free cash flow calculation. One last thing, not everything is calculated in free cash flow. The golden rule is to only include reoccurring items. So buying or selling shares or issuing dividends will not count towards free cash flow. Even if the business has spent a lot of cash in this because it's not core business activity, there are, these are one of items. This can also be asked during your investment banking interview. So what items will you not include and why when calculating free cash flow? So it's pretty important that, that you understand this. So after you've calculated your free cash flow, you can then use this to calculate the famous DCF model and other financial metrics. If you are interested in learning more about financial modeling or if you are trying to break into investment banking, then you might want to consider enrolling on our financial modeling course, which is where we go through everything which you need to know about building financial models and live examples, as well as showing you more importantly how to answer over 400 technical and behavioral interview questions to make sure you ace your interview and get ahead of everyone else. And don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you've enjoyed it, and please share it. Until then, I'll see you in our next video.